Hey team, Andre from High Performance Academy. Welcome along to another one of our webinars where we're going to be diving this time into the selection of Autosport connectors and uh, we quite often get asked about this because I know a lot of people do get confused and uh, while the price point of an Autosport connector is one thing to put people off purchasing them and using them, uh, first of all actually physically knowing what you, you need when you're specking one of these connectors, this on face value does seem somewhat terrifying and and while I'm not going to be able to show you the numbers on our camera, uh, on the side of every Autosport connector you're going to see a range of numbers that does on face value look a little bit daunting. Uh, this one is actually not an Autosport, it's a Sorry one, but it's uh, 8STA6-22-55PN. What the hell? does that all mean and if you don't understand this it's obviously going to be pretty difficult to decide uh, what is going to be right for your application. So I'm just going to go through this process really briefly here and what we'll do is we'll start by heading across to my laptop screen. Uh, I did actually go through this a couple of weeks back uh, on a different angle so some of you may have seen this if you are regular followers but this is the uh, the harness planning design for the wiring harness that's going into our Toyota FJ40 Land Cruiser and uh, on this particular page here what we've done is listed out uh, everything on the Motec M170 ECU that I am using here. Uh, so for example here we've got the injector outputs. Now it's not just the injector outputs so obviously for a V8 we've got eight of these running sequential injection but you can see directly below that I've also listed that I'm going to provide two 12 volt feeds from the power distribution module that will go along with these injectors. To function an injector we need a power supply to one side of the injector and then the ECU provides an earth to the other. So this is everything that we're actually going to need to make the uh, the engine operate and for example here if we look at our throttle position sensor this actually goes to the drive-by-wire throttle body not the accelerator pedal we've got four wires or four conductors that need to go there. We've got a 5 volt, we've got a 0 volt, uh, we've got TPS1 and TPS2 or main and tracking as it's called in the MoTeC lingo. These are wired to AV1 and AV2. So why this is important is it's not just a case of knowing we need a throttle position sensor. It's just physically listing out we're also going to need a 5 volt sensor supply and we're going to need a sensor 0 volt to go along with that. That's the three wires that a normal conventional throttle pedal uh, throttle position sensor is going to need. So once we've got that full list and I'll just scroll down a little bit you can see it is fairly extensive we've got a, a fair bit going on. Uh, we can jump across to our next design planner here which is where we've got a little bit more detail so here I've actually defined the connector that we are going to be using as long as as, as well as the boot that's going to go over this so uh, this is an auto sport connector it is an AS616-26SN okay so uh, that we'll go through how, I, how I've got to that conclusion uh, but what you can see here is we've listed out everything and we go down to the very bottom we can see that uh, we've got 79 terminals, 79 positions on this uh, this conduct this connector so this is obviously the first place we need to start the last sheet that we looked at basically once we've got to the end of that we're going to know everything that's going to go through the bulky connector for example and then we can decide based on that how many conductors are going to need to pass through and then once we know that that's our first and primary driver and what we're going to need in this case I know that we need 79 I'm actually using every single one of them and there was a little bit of juggling to get that to work so first of all okay I know I need to have 79 positions now I have worked this around the uh, connector that is available so I already knew that so that's okay you're not going to know to start with but once you've got that number we can then compare this to the TE connectivity manual which we'll look at in just a second and figure out what's likely to actually work for our application. The other thing that's really important here is the conductor size so that's really going to be the next driver and if we scroll through this again you can see at all of my conductors here are 22 gauge. I'm using a, a little bit of a variety of colours but irrespective of the colour they are all 22 gauge. How have I made this decision? Well that's kind of been made for us because we are using a MoTeC M170 ECU. The M170 uses 22 gauge or size 22 contacts so we're kind of stuck with that but that makes sense that's basically what I'd use to make most wiring harnesses from anyway. 22 gauge you might be thinking sounds a little bit light for some of the higher current draw applications 
There's nothing really too scary in this application that would exceed the 6 or so amps that we can get through a size 22 or 22 gauge contact. But if you needed to, and we do have one application, I'll just see if I can find it here and scroll down. Uh, we're actually running the starter solenoid wiring through this. It's not controlled by the ECU, but it's just a nice way of getting that neatly through the firewall. And a starter solenoid can draw 12 to maybe 15 amps. So obviously, if we can only ha handle 6 amps, the way we deal with this is we just double or in this case triple them up so there's that's the solution we use to get around that okay so we know we need 79 positions there and let's go to our TE connectivity manual so if you just google uh, autosport catalog or TE connectivity autosport catalog you're going to get to this catalog it is pretty extensive it covers all of their motorsport product i'll just scroll back up to the top so you can see what it looks like uh, dutch autosport interconnection solutions if you want to be super specific and we're not going to focus on the whole of it there's a huge amount of information in here that is really valuable of course if you are trying to spec up these connectors but we'll go through to page 12 which is for the as range uh, which is what we are using and here we've got the uh, connection a contact arrangement so that's this over here on the right hand side uh, so uh, what we need to do basically is figure out uh, what is going to work for our application and we can see that there's a, a variety of different site styles here uh, depending on what you're actually wanting to fit through, what size uh, of contact or what size of conductor you are using and the different contact arrangements. So for example, uh, this one here in a size 20 shell, uh, the this arrangement will give us uh, 16 uh, gauge 16 conductors so that's obviously for something that's going to be drawing a little bit more current so basically by going through here you're going to be able to decide uh, what contact arrangement sort of and, and size of shell you're going to need for your particular application and again if I get our con our, our uh, conductor uh, connector I should say get my words out right so yeah this is an AS620-35SN uh, so if we go and look at that that is this one here so the numbers here in particular 20-35 so the 20 is the the uh, shell size so basically the outside diameter of the shell steps up so uh, obviously there's much smaller ones available like this little guy here uh, they go much bigger than this as well so obviously the bigger the actual shell size is the more potential we've got for a higher contact uh, count inside of that higher position count inside of that so that's the first thing to get 79 uh, positions in this in this connector we're going to need to go to the size 20 shell so that's the first part there and then the contact arrangement because uh, we can see that uh, these two up here as well as these two here these are all size 20 shells but with different contact arrangements depending on again what we're trying to get through so it's the 20-35 that we need so that's some of the numbers on this but um, again the first number is there is AS so that's the series and then we have A6 so this defines what style of uh, con connector that we're dealing with so in this case 6 is a free plug so let's see what that actually means I'll just get rid of that and we'll scroll down all right so type 6 I just mentioned as a 6 is a plug so that's important because this is the part that actually does the half twist to engage so we obviously need a plug and the other side needs to be a receptacle so for the two to go together uh, we need one to be a type 6 and then we need another one uh, to be a type 1 or in some cases we might use a type 0 the type 1 is an inline receptacle so as we can see from uh, the drawing here we've got no flange so this is in line this would be if we didn't want to actually mount it the other option here is our type 0 and that gives us a 2 bolt flange which we can see here so this is ideal obviously if we are uh, mounting to a firewall so this is the other half of our connector for our FJ40 is the type 0. Okay so now we know what the 6 and the 20 and the 35 in this part number again it was an AS620-35. 
all starting to make a bit of sense hopefully and we can see where those numbers come from. The other part is S and N and we need to understand what those mean. So S stands for socket. P would be the other option which stands for pin and again just like we need a, a plug and we need a receptacle uh, to make two together we also need one half to be a male pin and we need the other side to be a female socket. If we've got the two halves both with pins or both with sockets they're not going to go together and that's an easy mistake to make as well. So that's what the P or the S means and then finally we've got the N on the end of it which just stands for the key weighing or keying uh, and that's defined by probably a little bit hard to see on this one but you can see we've got a, a red band which is the the typical uh, sort of default colouring that we see with these autosport connectors that is the N keying and uh, we want to make sure that particularly if we've got conductor, uh, connectors that are close together uh, we want to make sure that uh, we are using different keying so that it's not possible to mix them up so I scroll down here and this is basically how this all works, just everything I've said. So AS stands for our, our range, in this case the normal auto smart. The next one there is a 0, a 1, a 2 or a 6, 8 or 9. But we're not really using 8 or 9s, they're caps. Uh, so 0, 1, 2 or 6. And then we've got our shell size as our next number, then our dash, then our contact arrangement. Then we've got our insert type, whether it's a pin or a socket. And then finally our shell keyways uh, we've got n as I mentioned is red that's the standard unless we uh, want something else that's what we're going to end up with typically then we've got yellow green blue orange and violet if you really want to get fancy and uh, color code your wiring connectors so again not that scary once you actually know what you are looking at now there's a lot of other information in here as well that you are going to need the next question that normally comes up from our members when they've asked this question and then they know how to specify a uh, auto sport connector is great what tooling do I use in order to crimp these so uh, the Daniels Manufacturing Corp DMC crimp tools basically the go-to standard for crimping these and these come with positioners though and the positioner is important uh, as its name implies it positions the pin or the socket so that the crimp is going to be applied in the correct location also gives you information on that uh, about what setting to use on the crimp tool as well so if we jump back across to my laptop screen screen you can see we've got contacts and tooling part numbers uh, so here we've got our contact size 16 gauge 20 gauge and 22 gauge uh, then we've got the actual part number for the socket or pin uh, then if we come across we've got the insertion and removal tool but these come with the connectors anyway uh, then we've got the crimp tool that we should be using as well as the positioner for the socket or the pin so using this manual it is actually really easy going to first of all specify a connector that's going to suit what you are trying to do and then understand what tooling that you're going to need in order to actually properly crimp it. Not that scary so hopefully with this information it will allow a few more people uh, to go and use these connectors. If you like that video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.